Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the end of this uh, series, or really the campaign, well, the last episode at the very least, in which we're playing as Guangdong, Ibukamasu's Guangdong, but we're going to go towards the reconciliation path for him. Um, we, earlier, previously, we struggled, I struggled greatly, trying to get his preservation path, but now we're going to go with his uh, reconciliation path. Which is a little bit before everything really falls apart, but comes survival. The circumstances behind the global economic downturn are a once in a lifetime occurrence and is understandable but disappointing. The otherwise successful firms fail to adequately prepare in light of this. The government subsidized struggling businesses with an otherwise reliable track record. This must not be taken blind generosity, but as highly specific assistance for the highly specific issues. Oh, stack up warehouses. Even in the difficult times of the oil crisis, the Fujitsu products are so good that they practically sell themselves. While competitors find themselves struggling to sell premium rice cookers and televisions in the age of austerity, businesses will always be looking for that computational edge that only Fujitsu can provide. We can position ourselves to meet that demand at the price and in the quantities that our customers demand. Even if it means that we've put some quality updates to our... Uh, to the side, the oil crisis is an unprecedented opportunity for us to seize the market share we've always dreamed of, which will surely get better once the economy starts to grow again. And if you want to read about this, we're all, all in this together, which is a song, I think, from High School Musical. Um, if you want to read this one, I've read this one before, please go ahead if you'd like to. Yoshiko and Survivors. Mm, let's see. The directive came from above. Generate inspirational stories on how underdogs in the population are getting through the present unfortunate crisis with diligence and ingenuity. Yasuka, Yasukawa Yoshiko, though doubtful about the storyline, filled as it probably was with assorted lesser tablets and yellow papers, as she increasingly called them, dutifully went out on the streets and did as she was told. Her modus operandi, interviewing people that seemed to be holding out all right in the streets. Their responses were rather uniform, laced with sarcasm and larded down with cynicism. We're doing very well, we are, thank you very much. How kind of you, uh, Fujitsu lacking, Saka, to care so much all of a sudden at such a perfect moment. Oh, me, I'm doing effing well. Thanks for effing bunch for asking, isn't it? It's so wonderful that you don't come out of your little Fujitsu hidey hole to ask how we're doing just when things have gone to crap. Boy, I'm really effing grateful. Thank you so very much, my lady, for coming out of your posh offices and the presence of our dear leader, Iboka, to speak to us humble, worthless, Chinese uh, <clears throat> and uh, slaves. Your servants are doing well as possible, and a crapple like this made even worse and even better by our almighty chief executive. Her response was always the same. It's our pleasure to go on to the streets in order to turn our journalistic establishment towards truthful dissecting uh, journalism. At that, the interview, we would pro inevitably scoff and move on. Seven, three times, fourth time, Yoshiko began to fill doubt. Did she even believe the things coming out of her own mouth? But we're over here, and we've got to try to... Well, do the best we can. Mountain operations, of course, equipment in, in conditions 16 30 degrees. So, like I said, we've already done the preservation path. I'll go as far as we can with this and see what is here unique, different um, with this path, but underworld ablay, abiding. Underworld abiding. If you already do this, please go ahead. I don't want any more corruption. And I'll thank you. So, with this, 7.5%, I want to increase Chinese and Zuzhin support, which would be pretty decent for us. Yeah, the Chinese government doesn't really like us, but we don't really like them either. We can meet the representatives, I guess. I will give you both. Dear Chief Executive. Oh, I think there was this one before, so if you want to do this one, please go ahead. Find me less members. And talking to a brick wall. Well, if you want to do this one, please go ahead. That sucks. Oh well. Ah, uh, the Americans are here. Let's beat up the Sudanese stuff. Back to driving. If you want to do this one, please go ahead. Uh, which one is this one? Do we want to lower Japanese support at all? Is there a 90%? Nah, not really. Nope. Goodbye. And we're all in this together. We're, we all live underground. And now you're telling me, Chun felt the words hissing through his throat, that all the despondence among the folks who are Haizu are somehow all my fault. I mean, for F's sake, at least throw some of those pamphlets into their hands before you dump them all down the drain, would you? Screeched Little Red. Tattered Zong's young suit quivering with his frail body with every outburst of words. I just don't get why you're so gosh darn pissy about what actually is actually worth a darn in class struggle about keeping up with all those people's vigilance. And since when does vigilance mean trashing random jewelry stores and making walking targets out of themselves? Bellowed Scab Arm, hoarseness lacing every vowel out of his mouth. Entire Luan branch under you has been nothing but <clears throat> a, a farce, Red. Just admit it. Well, excuse me, but I'm not the one here who can't even pull his own parents out of the effing sofa. Jen opened his mouth and in, in her torpa somehow his vocal cords failed him. Little Red's jeers uh, was still deep in John skulls he reached for the familiar, or was it familiar anymore, after so many nights away at door. There's one thing that wannabe Malice was right about. This was it. Chun failed to mobilize even his own parents. Leong and May, heck, even wide and he can't even wallow. And Ibuka's book is shadow forever like so many others, but they had to stand up and once again Chun wanted to tell them. Without even bothering with a knocky crash through the door, change would, wouldn't come to those who just give up change. Therefore, I decided to apply for Zushin, Mom, Dad. Why? I hope you understand. Those words froze Chun in his tracks. Our less camaraderie forever. 
Guangdong and Fujitsu long provided cutting edge solutions to the sphere's technical issues and at bargain prices. Should our air swell allies wish to continue receiving the benefits of our partnership, it would be in their best interest to aid our continued smooth operation. While naturally our model's perfectly capable, self sufficient seasons in the interest of all the sphere's finances flow to the where they should be bet put to best use. Blue are the words I say and what I think. It was as if time itself had plunged below zero, and Chun could even feel the cold seeping in his pores. As in the eternal instant, he carelessly surveyed his brother's face as it turned towards him. Certainly wider than he last remembered, it seemed like Ibuka's dog treats did their job after all. The next second, his fist was already upon that pretty face. Thud! Crimson droplets blossomed into the air, clanks and screeches went flying as Hayes stumbled and crashed into the cupboard. May flinched. Her eyes blurry with tears, immediately wide darted up. Chun, hey, stop! So saw the prodigy kindly replaced his family, Chun could barely hear through the hissing of his own teeth. The coal was plugging up his ears, and we couldn't even be called family anymore instead of all the ga ra ga friends out there. He put the coat enveloping his eyeballs. Come on, hey, say something, gosh darn it. Say you give a crap about the rest of us. Yet in Hay's dark brown pupils, he could only find more ice, more apathy. I'm taking that as a no, the coal poured into Chun's heart. Now, then, why don't you get out of our sight, stupid jackal? You don't have to squabble in our house. With a smack of the table, Long too jumped to his feet. Hay ex has explained to himself very well enough, and anything he could earn for his family was anything that could get us through this crap. So what, you just leave it all to this integrated and ride in the gutter yourself? The coal's getting in Chun's brain now. I thought you and Ma were better than this, gosh darn it. We only deserve the best of ourselves, so why haven't you? Our purpose, variant 40034. The coal didn't left Chun's mouth when it froze solid, or dead solid, in his throat. He stood at the tour, met the petrified glares of his family for another few seconds, and stormed out of the another, without another word. Into the balanced platinum sea, reaching as far as I can see, as we have a cup of coffee with it. I need to descale my coffee maker. But anyways, um... I think I've read this one before. If you want to read about this one, in September 1951, Angels and Demons, please go right ahead. Yeah, I've definitely read this one before, so. Yep, it's not bad. Compromise can go a long way. We'll see if it ends up being worthwhile, though. Rush is killing itself, but you know, when is that going to happen? Mountains, and ooh. Hey, there goes the shot, you're on. Must be pretty freaking hot down here, huh? Hey, we got it done! Yay! Now we just need mountains. Tightening the bell. Everyone saw or heard the uh, broadcast. Ooh, did I read this one too? I read this one too. Please, if you want to read this one, please go ahead. No resources untapped. Nope. No connection unused. Even if Fujitsu remains steadfast in the face of the oil crisis and the ongoing recession, the same co cannot be said over many Japanese suppliers and customers, many of which are looking. To the chief executive for guidance. The stakes couldn't be higher. If all of them were to fail, then we would risk trading the road that led to the late chief executive Suzuki's downfall, leaving Fujitsu exposed and bereft of support at a crucial time. We'll be Fujitsu's need for less critical components or materials from the web of Japanese suppliers already operating in Guangdong. Any business needs customers. After all, meeting their needs halfway will surely lead to greater dividends on the road when, they, when things improve, as they must. Nice. Not looking good, is it? Not at all, no. It's just desert up here. Let him move in here. It makes it easier for us to kill them all that way. Um, 1.86 is not bad. Oh, they're attacking us too. Yeah. I don't really need that extra army XP, but you know what? Whatever. And there goes Iran. Goodbye, Iran. Goodbye. You think anyone cares about the Iranian civil war? Nice. Let him do it again. Fair weather friendship. Um... If you want to read this one again, please go ahead. I've definitely read this one before, so. I understand, sir. Get on over there, gosh dang it. The spirit of cooperation. He cannot be serious, can he? He said, came the crackly voice from Siking. We already did, we're deep in that crap, and he wants more money from us? It seems so, Kamai said. Hard times require difficult choices, and it seems our friend's Masaru, friend Masaru, has made the difficult choice of begging. I am, of course, assuming that we cannot be providing aid in an hour of need. Of course, and I've heard this speech is all about excellence, drive, and accomplishments. Surely he cannot, he could demonstrate a so-called excellence right about now. Is he really that desperate? It would seem so, Kamai said. I have endured that man's arrogance for years. No, I've been under the impression he would rather die than what he's doing now. Whether he realizes it or not, the man is comically just desperate. A sad story, I suppose, said the man from Mangyo. He was a few short years running around playing with his absurd vision, and when it all comes crashing down, he cannot even bring himself to remain true to his own ideals. Believe me, I've become a lot less sad when you've had to hold on a conversation with the pricks, said Kamai. Then it becomes hilarious. Such a contract. Guangdong may have been built by the Japanese, but it's run by the Sujin. We labor away every day who forged a new, brighter future. He booked his future, though. Without them, Guangdong would still be stuck in the past, still behind the simpletons of Anchukuo. The Sujin have earned their loyalty. It's time we reward them for it. Promotions and subsidies will do much to alleviate the strain of the crisis, no matter how this. Uh, howls of protest from the Japanese or endless discontent with the Chinese. For now, it is their turn to wait. The Yakuza have way too much support here. Remain calm. Let me remember that. Please go ahead. End transmission. Um, 
You can do this to this. Probably gonna try to circle them and kill them all that way. Nice. True to your vision. If you wanna do this one, please go ahead. Onwards and upwards. Hey, if you want to bo both of these, please go to head. Just bug and circle it in. Yeah, another casualty. I won't do that to you. No, I won't. Do. That was Fifth Umblam. A manager in QA, inspector in one of the larger Fujitsu factories in Koshu, I said those words in 15 minutes and her co-workers were deeply concerned. Until the recent crisis, she'd been calm and soft-spoken these days, on the other hand. Under the pressure of work, Lamb had become vulgar and brutish. We recently she'd be started ranting about this or that quality problem, the generally bad situation at the factory, of course. <coughs> that had been tolerable, but this time Lamb had truly stamped. The quality of this stupid assembly line up has done nothing but collapse lately. And you slackers don't seem to be giving a gosh darn about it. You're all just content to uh, leave it to me. Half consolingly, half confrontationally. A few of Lamb's co workers tried to muster a reply. I'm sorry it's been like this, they said. But you have to understand there's no other way. Somehow they just made her fly even further into her range. Would she come on a, some sort of on a drug? Likely, sedative, a simulant, or something else they couldn't tell. Not that it made a difference, anyways. As a debate among themselves, Lamb kept going. I'm the only person working my butt off in this gosh darn factory anymore. Heck, that's not good. A good for nothing ebook that probably doesn't give two crap about quality himself. Do you know what? Well, I waited for a reply. She stabber, staggered out of the room, shouting back at the people she left behind. Leave this Fujitsu crap. I'll, I'll start my own darn friend. That, that'll show you. Mm. There you go. So let's burn for now. Nice. When we get right there, we get in the war. Or this part of the war. We start to get the Americans and the other Sudanese forces. Come on, you're almost there. And if you want to do this one, please go ahead. Money where it should be. There you go. We really want to get up there, so we're just going to start taking all sorts of tiles. If possible. Once again, asking. <clears throat> While our position in the legislative council remains secure, many of our fellow compatriots in the legislature continue to put their own inhibitions over the knees of Guangdong, complaining daily about our supposed misdeeds, slights, and all the matters of transgression to imagine or not. Yeah, we cannot afford any more instability in these trying times. As much as we hate to admit it, we need other apathy. If not loyalty, to see us through this crisis. Close our meetings and backroom deals have gotten us this far. A few more will have to do. Nice. We lose a little bit of seats, but whatever. Uh, where are we at? 55, 58. Chinese, Zhujin. Um, hmm. I don't really want any more corruption or anything like that. It's very little, which is good. Target markets. That's a lot of product, pro profitability. Uh, profitability goes down. Japan. Uh, we could use a little more, I suppose. It would be it wouldn't hurt, kill us, I guess, but it hurts the government support too. You know what? We can lose a little bit of goodwill from the Japanese, right? Right. Right. Ooh, the divisions are probably pretty thick. Oh yeah, definitely thicker than what we've got here. Go and retreat for now, we can't beat those guys up. If you want to be a short staff, please go right ahead. All oh, men are equal. Guangdong remains haunted by certain inefficiencies from its former days in Nigerian backwater. Large swaths of our working population have little more than a peasant's education, something which raises inherent contradictions when they're put to use making cutting edge technology. Our long line of mind can still prove dangerous when it develops a grudge. Uh, Blind layoffs are inefficient, perhaps they'll be seen uh, somewhat more fair. The only way to enforce austerity survives by making sure the pain is equally shared, and Ibuka shares just a portion of the blame. Can I say any more visions? Yeah, I think we can, yeah. We 
Remember this one, please go ahead. The liability's gotta go. Go to buy. Nice. Stupid Americans are here. Um, let's see, once again, for our future. If you want to buy inside joke, please go ahead. Uh, let's see. Uh, for our future, the newest proposal brought forward in the Legislative Council of the Chief Executive's behest sounded like something that CE's age-old rival would propose in 64, which virtually no one trusted in it from the moment he left the man's mouth. If book was proposing a petition, yes, the man had gone scorned or scorned the Legislative Council for the entirety of his tenure if it was asking for support. This novel governing concept was meant to be in support of New Guangdong Feature Fund, which also reminded people too much of a Sony or CK proposal to seem credible to them, which would finance the state using collections from investors home and abroad during the ongoing oil crisis. Signatories were to be let go representatives and other notables. The said representatives and notables, that unsurprisingly enough to more Morita Keo, were dismissive. A gimmick, they said, too blatantly pandering after years of ignoring every word that came out of your mouth whenever you, made, you made the decision. It began to repress his rage, a gesture of goodwill, and now this is how they repaid him. The usual Zod's voices started screaming in his skull, Double down, screw them all, double down, screw them all. Double down, he shut it down, he couldn't be bothered with dogmatism. He didn't listen to what those people had to say, he was tired, and that was all. Really, that was all it was, an invisible, invisible cage. As dissidents and rabble-rousers once uh, more take this Guangdong streets in opposition to our so-called inadequate response, we must remind ourselves to treat these misguided fools with a velvet glove. Since as they may be, we cannot risk needless provocation when we can at least afford it. Thankfully, there are measures we can take that are far less disruptive to the parade of agitators filling the streets. Road closures, traffic barriers, and corporate announcements should do the part to smooth some of these edges. Nice. Where are we at with uh, all this? 16, 73% is not bad. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Just come here and just beat him up. Like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want you to even move in there. I just want you to beat him up. Angola. Remain calm, remain calm, remain calm. A little vengeance for the Zujin Yamada, once a Chinese worker named Tsioi, until a few weeks ago when he suddenly managed to attain Zujin status. The most recent de declaration of the last ma mass layoffs offered a bit of opportunity amidst the miserable duty he had been saddled with as manager. For years, yes, 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 Yamada had an a hole of a manager, a man called Okuma. For the worst kind of scoundrel amidst all the scum Japan had sent on the shores of Guangdong, he was arrogant, unintelligent, and cruel. He never spoke Cantonese except to mock those that spoke it. He never gave orders except in an angry tone. Also, if you're about to plug the leak, please go ahead. Uh, you might remember what Tsio had gone through. Saw the choice ahead of him as a no-brainer. It was time to get a little revenge and balance the scales a little. Unless the Chinese were laid off, nothing could be done. So I thought to himself, that scoundrel Ibuko would accept nothing less. But at the bottom of the list, the staff and the people transferred out and otherwise removed from the list were one person Tsio named Wanukuma Shigaharu. The Chinese workers on the hearing that cheered and the layoff victims felt a little better. Even Tsio had turned into a Zushin Hanjian at least, he remembered what he had suffered with them. As Okumo shoved out of the complex and laid off the person who moved down, the workers started to celebrate. Yamato wanted them to tell them to go back to work, but Tsuyo shared the glee and went along with it. Nice. Now let's just take that. See what you can do. I can't breathe. Um, I think I read this one before. Oh, come on. We got, got completely encircled here, huh? Uh, well, maybe I'll read this one. Good heck already, Crete. And the shouts crashing your book as he dragged his feet across the threshold as Yuji first primary smirked. He can't go to heck. He'd already been soaked in a head to toe for 256 days in a row in county. Yes, yeah, darn me to the deepest pits of Lucifer's place all you want. At least this time I'm not the one doing it to myself anymore. He said him. Volley of thoughts. Uh, officers crashing into flesh blew apart the smoke 
Smog choking his head at once. He winced, but his skin d didn't feel a thing. It wasn't him being pummeled, it wasn't even him being screamed at either, apparently. Forcing his eyes open, he pivoted his weary he heavy, weary head to his right towards the source of all the ruckus. Two schoolboys thr thrashing a third boy on the ground, th thrusting their shoes into his sides again and again and again, punctuating the profanities flowing from their mouths. Good heck, thud. Just a stupid liability, thud. Effing waste of air. Thud, effing crap stain upon this place. Thud, the boy didn't even offer a whimper. It was almost like he had no idea what was happening to him. Then for one billionth of a second, his gaze collided with Ibuka's, and Ibuka saw all emptiness. An emptiness Ibuka known too well. Too well. No flashbang went off in his brain. No, 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 no. All his image, or all his limbs jolted back to life at once. He didn't know when he made it across the hallway. He didn't know when he shoved his, the way of the two bullies. All he knew was that when he came to, he already had the trembling child in his arms. Sorry. Something was flowing down his cheeks. Sorry. One stream of tears converged with another until all that remained on his face was a veil of watery sorrow. Good God, I'm so sorry. He screwed his eyelids shut, and in the bottom of his void, he saw the veil gazing back at him. The shape of his lips frozen in eternal derision. He saw as they flitter open like a pair of white, pale feathers. Sorry, doesn't cut it. Sorry, doesn't cut it. <sighs> we apologize for the inconvenience. So what do you mean, closed down? I phoned the department just yesterday. Again, sir. We apologize profusely for this. Due to the staffing cuts, we are currently unable to offer the same level of service throughout region. Unbelievable! Do you know how many hours of checkpoints and track blocks we've had to drive through? The number of stupid questions I've been asked by di crapper cops who can't speak Cantonese all for this? An unfortunate coincidence, but then again, there's been a greater need to crack down on seditious organizations as of late. I'm sure you're not a member of any, so you must be understand. So what if I am or not? I'm a taxpaying citizen and have a legal right to complain. That's correct, sir, but we cannot help you here. If you allow me to find the relevant file, I can find the nearest office still. Why, why bother? So I can waste even more gas, which has cost me more by the second? Only find that the office has been magically closed down. Screw this and screw you. I'm going home. Have a nice day, sir. They know better. It is incomprehensible why people decide to flee to the poverty-stricken uh, Republic of China or the infinitely corrupt Empire of Japan, so we must at least try to keep these vital refugees within the borders of Guangdong. While we recover, which suits well to spend some of our growth on our campaigns designed to uh, convince the refugees of potential refugees to remain home. Yeah. War austerity trains, huh? Ninety percent, huh? It's not bad. Getting closer. Warfare stuff. There you go. I don't really care at this point too much. Snacker. How did you mean thought about the pet black uniform? Oh, I think I read some before. You want to some please go ahead? Yeah. Our problem are men. Every tooth we have. There's nothing to fear from our trusted associates. But this is the last time I think this one. Yeah, we'll do this one. Pretty pennies were used to build and reinforce the police force of our wealthy state and their supplementary food used to fund militias. This means the means are in Nubuka's hands, and now I must merely apply them. There you go. Destroy that American division. Very nice epistle. Everything been going to crap, even the quality of monsters slumber. Better memories is fears. As regrets and unmet wishes all came and went in in toilet haze. He came so fortunate that he learned to remember the blurry outlines. Even so, tonight was different. There was this voice banging against his skull as he floated into the endless void. And a voice of judgment that sounded at once like a KO of the Emperor and the pastor of Master's Church in Fujimichu. One of the few home islanders he missed by learning classical Japanese of the words of a god as scenes of fire and brimstone flashed before his eyes. Go to now. Go to now, you rich men. We've been howling your miseries which shall come upon you. But you two stockbrokers panicked in a room. One leaned against the wall, which a projector showed an image of total disaster. Others cried to clutch telephones, and one was held back from jumping out of a out of a window to his death. You have stored up yourself for wrath against the last days. Angry Fujitsu employees took revenge on a crowd manager that, egged on by Ibuka's own decrees, had stolen the salaries and mistreated them. After brutalizing him, they raided the safe in his office and emptied it, destroying what they could or destroying what they could not want. They set the place alight. 
You have feasted upon earth and in righteousness. You have nourished your hearts in the days of the slaughter. You have condemned and put the death to death the just one and resisted you not. And then came the faces, the wailing, the weeping, the shriveled faces, male, female, young, old, Japanese, Chinese, the crucified cross atop the hillocks of Golgotha. And then he broke a jolted awake, night ground drenched in cold sweat. And then the words came to him, Surely not I, Lord. Surely not I. Glimmering, glimmering, glittering, glimmering. Uh, let's see. And I just can't take it anymore the way the Japanese mock it for not being like them, despite being a Zujim, and how the Chinese all keep repeating the same darn word, Hanjian, 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 at me despite my best efforts to prove them, just trying to keep uh, school from burning down. Is that wasn't enough? They've been throwing up things at me and sending threats, threatening notes to me right where everyone else can see them. Li Wai breathed deeply, in and out of her way Mother Todd, after going half horridly and half angrily through a diatribe about the state of affairs at her school. Her brother Hayes' response was to try and comfort her. See here why there's nothing wrong with being brave and speaking for what's right before cutting off on a tangential random of his own. And I'm so tired about every bloody Chinese in this gosh forsaken city seems to hate me. Well, keep calling me Han John too. It's just so I think easier to put labels on people, and it helps n nothing that they're all too creatively bankrupt to bother than anything else. Suddenly he stopped, breathing heavily. Glancing at a somewhat confused why, and darted into Chun's, by now mostly deserted room. Who else seemed to hate his guts for doing the right things he did? Shuffling, shuffling over and again, Hay messed up his room until he saw a poster from the committee of Chinese labor. Of course, of, of course, his dude brother's coming after him. Raging strangely, fear consumed him. Nine days left, whoops. Um, I'll get to 88%, which kind of sucks. Nine days, huh? Ten days, five days. Twenty days, huh? You know what? If we're... Uh, I think we're twelve and a half. We'll go with that one. And we need ten percent left. But we've, like, and within five days. Oh, wait. Oh, well, you know what? I'm gonna redo this one, then. Crap. When removed. I should have paid more attention to this one. They know better. Well, let's at least do that one. Read this one first. Carrot on a treadmill. Flat of the pigs. If you want to read this one, please go ahead. Or maybe we'll just go on anyway with it, without it. Eh. Carrot on a treadmill. Our problem or man, of course, and all systems go as well. If you want to read this one, please go ahead too. Leon collapsed on the sofa and stared blankly at the TV. It was about as all he had the energy for after shifts, and which were just getting longer and longer. He had fallen uh, with the Japanese with a strain by this hour, but it was either that or endured the crap that put him on the Cantonese channel. And then again, tired as he was, he really in any position to understand or respect quality. Just as he was dozing off, the brace of tones of National Public Service announcement jolted Leon awake. What was now, I wonder? What was the new emergency powers? What new things getting made illegal again? Once again, the Buka wasn't there, and a coterie of Fujitsu men were there to deliver the news. Only this time, nothing was getting banned, and no one was going to jail, and it said. Promises were being made. Those who stuck with Guangdong through its hard times would be rewarded with great projects and initiatives, just as soon as the nation healed and a better future, they promised. Leong knew better than to believe them, but all the same, he had no choice. People were leaving Guangdong in droves, and that's what his announcement was all about. He had some family who had left. He had some family. The Republic of China may have its problems, they said, but there were more opportunities than there used to be. And it was better to be crushed under the boot of one of their own instead of in the name of the Japanese supremacy. Leon couldn't find himself disagreeing, but he sacrificed a lot to even get to his relative position of comfort. He spent most of his time speaking Japanese and being referred to by a Japanese name. His national identity card no longer even referred to him as Chinese, just Zhu Jim. He could hardly claim to be a great Chinese patron, and those in the Republic would have no reason to trust him. Like it or not, he simply had to force himself to believe in his Fujitsu for what was left. You made your bed, now lie in it. I was desperately trying to get to the mountains here, man. That's why I gave up on music. Um, you're going to this, please go ahead. Go to begin. Come on, get over here first. Current machines crowd. Um, a book cannot contain his glees of rather latest reports from Fujitsu's German branch. The products have permeated all sectors of the economy, securing a uh, dominant market share of the competing market, and leaving Siemens, a German competitor, in the dust. Very old John cannot compete with either for Jesus' innovation, nor its price, nor all the companies that became the public face of it competing in the Reich. It seemed that every factory, office, and administrative building that had a Fujitsu product installed in it, she might have the previously stifling bureaucracy to carry it so characteristic of national socialist economics. This, of course, provoked a great outcry from the more traditional xenophobic citizens of the Reich, who took fear of a sinister Asiatic Jewish plot to undermine the hard working Aryan with unaccountable machinery that secretly transmitted its users to added to Tokyo. These accusations have not found much purchase among level-headed German businessmen, though they are a cause for concern as long as the fear of the regime remains on unsteady ground. Mediocrity always try to drag excellence down to its level. Of course. Of course.
We're almost together. Alongside hundreds, if not thousands, of desperate men and women, Quan and Brasota at the door. They've been killed here for hours now. Heck, they've been killed in Guangdong for years now, but here they stayed, line after line. Um, a border officer stood at the checkpoint with their shields forming a nigh impenetrable barrier. No guns, though. They weren't letting them pass forward or back, but they weren't arresting them either. What was going on? Assembled citizens began one of the pigs with a loudspeaker. No accent, clearly, Sujin. City Guangdong understands your concerns and your fears, but we cannot allow you to pass. The border has been closed in the interest of mutual security and economic stability. You're tempted to flee a global crisis in which there is nowhere to run. Return to your homes. Only through courage, diligence, and drive will it be possible to see prosperity once more. We must all struggle together. Quang laughed. Struggle together? Well, that was... Well, that was... Was that right? Coming from the GFPF of all organizations, and there's truly 36 years of living, a lot of things have stripped away his pride, but even lying in the lowest bits of dirt and crap, it's just enough to never even consider the possibility of being caught. He'd rather die than make a living being an attack dog for the Japanese, brutalizing his countrymen for a little more than condensation. Or condescension and a mediocre salary, he just uh, had enough self respect, just enough humanity not to do that. And now, those blackies dare to speak of solidarity? With the speaker cop any closer, Kwong would sink his teeth back into his effing traitor skull, but he was behind the shields. And that's the crowd seemed displeased but calm. They wouldn't be surging forwards anytime soon, not through that line. They kept screaming at the checkpoint, but with each passing sp uh, minute, minute, a little quieter. Still, rats in a cage. Get to here. That's where we're really at. Get rid of, that, rid of that American division over here, and we should be okay. Uh, if you want to read this, please go ahead. Uh, did I read this one before? Um, yeah. I think I read this one. So if you read this one, please go ahead. My dream is not a lie. I'm not a lie. The book of monsters is not a lie, and I refuse to have it any other way. So now we gotta wait for the next part to pop up and everything to collapse. Reach out, imbeciles, insects, mediocrities, mediocrities. Of medios goodies. Parasites! So you keep calling them. You're so above them. Your visions are grander than anything I could have ever achieved. Didn't stop them from getting one over you this time, though, didn't it? Turns out people aren't doll dolls in your toy box and they won't be played with the disposal of to suit your whims. If you want them to step down, you're going to have to try something other than concession. Cons consension for change. You're going to have to pay attention to the concerns of others for once. Don't like it? Tough. Compromise can go a long way as much as the pains of Buka. Make amends. Yes, yes, they don't have your vision and your drive. They just aren't as brilliant as you. Oh, also, if you can read this one, please go ahead, too. Um, as good and capable of single-handedly managing every part of the government and business administration, then, after all, that's what you've done to be in order to make a manager taken as driven by ethnic and class divides as one you preside over. Oh. Oh, crap, not this stuff. Um, your fellow Japanese are just as back into corners as you are, and you should be a natural allies, but they aren't looking to you for leadership. They see you as an overbearing a liability, unless they change your tune, and maybe they'll just hand you over to the mob personally. Maybe you deserve it too. Also, now we're negotiating with uh, the GFT. So, uh, just in case, we're going to save anyways. We still have a cup of coffee to keep the nest warm, but still. <sighs> Very good. Good cop, bad cop. This is going to glitch out probably for us. I don't really care at the end, because um, I'm just going to use consequence if I have to at this point in my hope for a career, but book them. I'll see what it takes. So we're doing okay. I'm trying to dismantle them. Um, oh, and it's laggy. Oh, hey, we actually won the war. Look at that. Stay us down. Hide away. Um, let's see the itching plague. Oh, if you read this one, please go ahead. And if you read this one too, please go ahead too. Yep, carrot and stick. Push further. We'll see. We're gonna exhaust as much as we possibly can. Um, Pahlavi wins the Iranian Civil War. Very nice. Pahlavi, I don't want to do this one because I don't want to increase Japanese frustration. So, we're trying to limit that as much as we possibly can. Which would be nice. A coin toss? Well, that didn't work out. And it probably won't work out in the end anyways. But, we'll try to at least dismantle these guys. So, Really, um, I'm here to like just get to the end path with uh, reconciliation. So, Room without a view? Yep. Pretty normal. Pretty normal. Welcome back. There you go. Suicide is painless. That's what they think. As we make amends. And concede. Ah, uh, what did you expect? Oh, do we fail? Yeah. We failed. Uh, the China's been living resentfully under Japanese boot heel for decades now, and your tenure's done nothing but a president further. It feels like humanity won't work on someone like, someone like you, who sees people as a little more than machines, which makes it a gosh darn thing that your hollow vision doesn't even apply to basic principles of engineering. 
Tell me, diffusers and resistors hold back the ground ambitions of a circuit? Is a structure wise to send the maximum amount of voltage and possible coursing through the wires at any given moment? No? Well done, genius. If you do that, the machine will break like harming uh, anyone near it. You want to keep your job or even the remnants of your fragile eagle? Ease out the Chinese before you cause a critical overload. Nice. Alright. Um, we can try to negotiate now. Yeah. We try to dismantle them, but yes, we will. Oh, I'll get all the way to save Umsbudsman. Go and uh, as long as we continue to increase government control, that'd be good. I have a decent amount of political power too. Uh, wow, our growth is not bad. Deficit's manageable. Not bad. Not bad at all. So attacks are relentless, but the numbers are finally dwindling down, which is pretty good overall too. A counter offer. Oh. Ah, uh, we don't have this one. Please go ahead. Concede. Uh, an independent. Uh oh. Oh, okay, so independent woodsman. I'll take it. Ask it yourself. Stop, darn idiot! Heck, stop! You thrice, darn idiot! You kissed ingrate to stab people like that are just like you once were in the back. What? That isn't what I'm doing. B.S. Uh, think, think. Gods and emperors, darn you! Think. Aren't you Zujin like you? Aren't the Zujin like you? Didn't you start out with nothing at the beginning until you hit a big brick break? With that telecom company, didn't you work your way up, forge yourself a new identity, so then aren't you beating them down for being like you, you traitor? Yes, they are, and yes, I am good, and at least you realize it. They realize this too, you ruthless German aping stupid, uh, screwing good for nothing. If you turn your back on them, you're turning your back on yourself. Nice. I thought of nothing. I read this one before. Uh, uh, let's see. Well, let's see. I guess I can read this one. He was a very lucky man, as I kept saying. A couple of false teeth inserted in a month out of the pasture, and he was finally able to move around like he almost used to. Just a while longer, the hospital said he'd be back on top and work, back to work. It's said he'd even been free courtesy of Ujitsu, which was good. Even the, with his paycheck, Keiko didn't want to imagine his family struggling with the medical debt he'd created. The more he saw, the, it seemed to help, help cause enough strife for his family already. Weeks upon weeks had passed, and the situation in the streets showed no signs of stopping. It was amazing how tedious carnage could become, even after being his direct victim, when subjected to days upon days of it on TV. Between the photos of the cathode ray tube image and the distance both Japanese and the Cantonese language reporters put between themselves and the crowds, the faces all seemed to blur together. But even then, even between the smoke and the static, he kept glimpse, glancing glimpses of his brother. He couldn't tell whether these were genuine sights or the mere projection of an overactive mind, but he doubted it mattered. His parents both been there to see him. Why had seen him? But Chum was nowhere to be found. His whereabouts unknown. Officially, anyway. He didn't have to, have to learn all... He had to figure out he was either in the heart of the storm or six feet under. Once again, he gave upon Zushin's application. The sheet printed in bilingual Japanese and Cantonese seemed to fade in formless ink whenever he stared at it. So what he wanted, right? There, here he was, a key to a brighter future for himself and those he loved. The current situation couldn't continue forever, surely? But that was what they had said two weeks ago, and yet it went. On and on and on. Did he deserve this? Was this the destruction of the cage he helped to build when he was so trapped in? Had he truly recovered, he had simply arrived into a heck of his own making. He lay back down his bed, staring at the ceiling. Oh boy. The council proves A small man, some executive for Ibuka Monsters Company, who had been granted the right to tally, walked up to the podium in the center of the council floor. He stood at the podium, watching the crowd of executives and waiting for them to quiet. Finally, he gave a short statement into the microphone. The vote passes, the negotiations with the dissidents can now be put in effect. The conversation crashed to a halt across the room, as each man considered the way of the moment. For those who pushed forth agreement, there could be a celebration later. For those who fought back, seething and fuming, yet for the moment, the room could be united in shock. As the moment set in, the initial shock gave way to quiet concern, a jittery contemplation of what might come next. The news thus far had only gone so far as this room. Soon it may make its way through Guangdong and beyond, beholden to the judgment of every executive officer, general, or worker, and most importantly, every protester who pledged themselves to the other protesters of the group. The world soon reacted to the news, and the world is rarely kind of Guangdong. A shot in the dark is all shot. So those who leave, um, because of our most valuable proposals, independent ombudsman, we get way more Zuzhin support, we lose quite a bit of expat support, we get more Chinese government support, but we lose a lot of Japanese approval, whatever, it costs way more, almost a billion itself. Poverty gets better, which is good, um, and gets more high increases in education, unemployment, pensions, industrial regulations, uh, policies, which is really good. So overall, that was, that's not bad. We're looking decent, as poverty just literally got worse. As it, poverty improved, it literally got worse. So, whatever. Um, we don't really need to do that one. I don't mind increasing government despair at the very least. I don't want to increase Japanese frustration, so. Solution support, anything else. Divert resources away. I should do that one. Oh, I can't divert them away. Darn it. <laughs> That'd be funny if we could. 
Those who leave. Um, I believe the Gong Dong might have grown a fair hair. So, because if you already this one, I've read this one before too. So, increase rider strength by one percent. Uh, rider radicalism by one percent because we dealt with the GFT. The CCL's strength and radicalism ticks have increased. Everyone's state gets five percent more government control, more political power, and increases government c despair by sixty percent. Someday, nineteen fifty. You ever hear what foreign minister, foreign affairs ministry's been up to? Came a chaos, careless whisper, uh, uh, voice. <clears throat> he stopped. The afternoon sun caressed his face. Come again? They finally went through all the carving out of Guangdong yesterday. After heaven knows how many back and forths, and service of special pan-Asian interest. A chaos shrug. Whatever the heck that means. He said as the running waters below the Nihonbashi filled his ears. I'm going to say no to a clean start. He began. For the two of us, I mean, now new markets, new materials. We can always move over events up too crowded here in the home islands. Masaru, please. Okay, I'll smirk grew into a smile and laugh. I get what you want to break new ground. Well, we both do, but remember right now, we're barely keeping the company afloat as is. You sure you'd rather put it all on the line a second time? Haven't I told you, as far as I'm concerned, I've only got 50 years on this planet, he blurted out. I want to make something out of it. All that I could do, do all that I could, however short it might be. You know very well, Kale, that I, I don't think you understand my question. And the smile was gone. So it was a river, the bridge, the sun, what remained of post war Tokyo. The calm white hair grew back onto Okeo's, did his never ending frown. Are you sure you want to risk everything you have, perhaps everything you love, everything you care for, about the sake of your dream? Then I'll float it back. The empty drawer, the TV set, the courts, the spotlights, the metal touch of the microphone in his inaugural dress, the row after row of bulldozers in the chrome draped citadel sprouting out in their wake, the opium dens, the skeletal hands, the fires, yells, screams, and old men alone in the wreckages of an office. The mango corpse of a nation laid bare before his eyes. Twenty years later, he book a monster smile and gives answer, I am. There's always another way. Those days of the KO on Tokyo Telecommunications, if only I could return to those without the misery of millions on my mind. As we're still dealing with these guys, a tense meeting. Um, we're going to this, please go ahead. But we're going to continue going on and see what else we can do. Admit, for months, five, six, uh, the craftsman just keeps going and going, and yet here you sit, so blissfully oblivious as to how clean... Clean up after your own mess. Ever wonder why? Because no man is an island, and every man is a piece of a continent. Because no one else is moronic enough like you, dear genius, to make an enemy of literally every other person on the planet all by himself. Here you go. Here's a skeleton key to all your woes, ultimate solution you've craved so badly. Happy? Now go on. Try it and put it into practice like the man of the sciences you are, and you know what to do. Let's go. Reach out. Bow. Say it loud to their faces that, yes, all you've done is jump on them, and yes, they all deserve so much better than this. And beg that Guangdong forgives you, for you've already failed her long ago. It's time to admit the truth. You can't do this alone. Perhaps you should have done this from the start. Nice. Their space. You shameless, brutish, good for nothing. Just how are you any better than the imperialist madman in Germany or that Manchurian son of a crapper, Komai? Why do I not like them? I swear, you lie. Only Manchurian or an SS officer would be as brutal as you have been to these poor, poor people. If you want to avoid executing the Manchurian plan with your own hands, show some mercy for once in your darn full life. Stop using brute force methods to solve this math you've gone and created. You of all people should get to know that, that brute forcing isn't the way to get through a des design problem 99% of the time. He's out. The security measures. Just even a little. For the gods' sake, show some respect for the lives and the dignity of these fellow human beings of yours. Security sadness is tenuous. Taking it to the streets. Drag him in. Currently about 50%. Will negatively impact viewership. Uh, no. Let's wait for hierarchy. Economic review. Oh boy. We didn't quite make it, but you know what else is new? <laughs> what else is new? Their space and the concession. Singling out the big fish. All right, you're going to this big grid. Their demands. All right, so you cut the poor people out some slack. Good on you. you clearly, aren't a complete idiot. But let me be perfectly clear to you: this even isn't even close enough. That it's time for you to do something that even Komar, to say nothing of a Kao or Liu or Matsushita, was always better doing than you: listening to people. Go out at this very instant and listen to Guangdong's people for once. Listen to what those riders that I have to ask of you. No, sh shut up. You're wrong to call them ungrateful vagabonds and perform what kind of Kershitsan's call an examination of conscience. Come to terms with your myriad blunders. Ask yourself what foolhardy actions of yours brought them to this pass. How much misery have you caused them for a decade or more, and what exactly are you going to do to fix it? Nice. The change. Officer, um... Have I read this one? I think I read this one. Uh, maybe not. Uh, LCO49, that is Hayashi Kozin, had obtained the condemnation of his fellow officers for his work during the riots. Of particular note was many of his defending the Canton Koran and stabilizing the front end port district. However, those are different stories to be told at a different time. Now, on the other hand, Hayashi was confronting a group of particularly enraged militant riders. He and his fellow officers had been fighting this group for the longest time, who knew how many weeks in a row. Keeping his baton and shield at the ready, his rifle loaded, he kept the riders at bay. Oh, as he had as he had all this time. Yet there was no emotional reward, no reassurance, no feeling that he was doing his duty. No, there was numbness. Nothing more. All of a sudden, orders came through from behind the lines, orders from the highest levels of government, to stand down. Hayashi Kozin had to repeat the word several times. Stand down? Yes, stand down. A feeling cracked within Hayashi. No, within Lam Hyo Sion. A feeling that was, not bound, that was not boundless numbness. No, something else. 
A feeling uh, then Lam Hao Soon dropped his rifle baton shield unprompted. The feeling deepened even as his fellow officers began to argue about the orders as the argument spread back through the ranks. Even as the rioters pushed him back despite their own confusion, Lam was being identified. The feeling was it was it relief? Nonsense. How much frustration do we have with these guys? Because concerns are rising. That's 41%. I still don't want to increase, uh, increase government despair. is good. Anything for government despair that doesn't piss off the, the Japanese government. Oh, look at this one. Order of Escalation. Decreases strength, radicalism, and decreases Japanese frustration. Yeah. Ooh, this will cost a lot because he begged the lookup for a CCL compliance or compromise. Um... I don't want to do that. Decrease government's despair. No, we're good. Find his weak link and bring him in. Anything else we want to do here? Honestly, still nothing I want to do there. Maybe for now. I, I, I might do things there later. We'll see. Uh, you know what? A little bit of corruption. Increases Chinese government support. It's already really low, anyways. Do slightly more there, and then we'll pump it up here with a little bit more with 4%. And eh, do the 4% one, that's fine. Their space, their demands. The economy's still in the crapper. Oh my god. Sins of the father and husband. Thirty percent. One step ahead. Keep it quiet. That's fine for now, whatever. Yeah, dismantling is much, or negotiating is much easier than trying to dismantle them. Dismantling them is a pain in the butt. Oh my god. 30% ah, rigidity. Like shipments to a factory. Look at that. Tipping her hand. We have enough clues to do our investigations of government, control the regions, to surgically strike the CCL. All right. Concession. As Latin Kyle Suen felt the increasing swell of an unfamiliar relief of the enemy, the Guangdong police attachments, a deployed though the chaos ridden state, began to shift to the defensive. That was not a wonder after all. There, there was not the question of why. I would rather do and die. What was wondrous about this refocus was the fact that they did it with a minimum of complaints after the initial reassurance of orders from the headquarters. Yet the willingness of the azure caped uniformed men of Guangdong to, as it were, chilled out and slow down was not to be interpreted as the willingness to retreat or let the rioters run wild. No, they were just as omnipresent as they had always been at any point during the riots. Despite that, the first reaction of many of the rioters was to exploit the change in strategy. Go on the fence, smash up a few more uh, Fujitsu assets, make the frustration clear, or perhaps not. This sudden about face. It was sending shivers down their spines. When they tried to take action, they noticed something. They noticed how effing tired they were of everything. All this disorder, all this rage, how pointless it was. So they decided to just do nothing for once, and the cautious peace reigned in Guangdong. A change? Our apology. We lose two more seats to so get more Chinese Zuzhin support, and increases the strength and radicalism. Look at yourself and tell me over that these last few years of your rule, since Suzuki Tai Chi and uh, Yasuda screw up, that you haven't been uh, wronging the innocent people of the state year after year in the name of your precious efficiency and meritocracy. Meritocracy. You admit it? Good, then. There's still some degree of uh, hope left for you. Uh, have you got any suggestions on how to start fixing this mess you've gotten created? Go out and apologize? Never. If they... Never mind if they accept, or at least they show I'm starting to care for once in my life. A perfect suggestion. Great minds think alike. Clearly, go out then, shoot, make the apology already. And I, as I learned in the last time we did this, which frustrated the hell out of me, and uh, even had the devs talk to me, or through a comment, uh, and kind of figured it out too, that if you have less than 50%, like from China, they're meddling. So, prisoners. Look at this. Nice. Good to know. You know, I'm always learning. And the devs have done a fantastic job with this mod. I love it. Stage 2. The radicalism is high. More successful. The ability of a terrible machine. Concerns are rising, which is not high enough. One's bustling now. So, uh, greatly weakened them. Well, they're already pretty weakened already. Routine disrupted. Oh. Huh, more corruption, huh? That sucks. Yeah, so doing okay, though. Their demands are negotiations. Oh boy. Oh boy. If in 1962 you were to tell Masuda Gonbi that in under 10 years he would be sitting in the ruins of a Fujitsu office negotiating with a representative of riding Cantonese riders, he would look at you funny and ask if you had your head checked recently. Yeah, that was what he was doing that day in Koshu, having talks with talks about talks with a man named Louis Mang. 
No, Matsuda, nothing, of course. I did not trust his opposite number, nor that the rider did not trust him. Mind you, that made sense after everything. It also made things more difficult, that he had to deliberately avoid being in any way condescending. Compounding the problem was that his continuity was broken on the wheel, as the German expression went. I'd like to... I would, to liking, be able to borrow position. Propose, a propose, the next object or thing. Louis Man was bemused at what he was seeing. The Kun Ting from Fujitsu was maybe a little bit better than a shameless subhuman colleagues, but he still couldn't trust him after all. Or after it. Nor did he exactly fault Kung Ting for trusting him, distrusting him. Let's see the man talking his horrid Cantonese, combined with how the man was very obviously struggling with not being condescending, was slightly hilarious. He had to chew on bitter melons that a friend got him to avoid the urge to lose his mind laughing. Despite the teeth clenched, nail biting nature of the discussion, the two were able to reach an agreement that they could live with. Well, that alone was sufficient. Our cries. Alright, you went and apologized to them. Well done. Your precious engineers from Sotach Sushon It. Tsukojima Corporation, or whatever the heck you call it, clearly managed to avoid replacing your whole brain with a silicon on the use of fetishize, but this isn't even close enough. Aren't you forgetting some people? Do you mean the Japanese businessman got it in one job? Got it in one? Good job for you, anyways. <coughs> Go out immediately and reach out to the rest of the Japanese business community, even Keo, who I know you hate, even though there's less and less reason to do so anymore. Go tell them that for once you're willing to work with them, that you'll give them a fair shake for once more. I hate to have to resort to honorifics, but please, for your own sake, stop shutting yourself out like this. Yeah, first. Nice. Rush him. Nice. Stealth planes, yeah. Happy April, everybody. Underwater blades, god dang it. And our cries. My apologies. As the policemen became less aggressive, the protesters first begrudgingly and willingly followed them into the calming down. And calming down, another sea change was taking place in Fujitsu controlled offices, and a few places still independent of Fujitsu and Guangdong. One by one, a spat of apologies began to issue from the mouths of Fujitsu representatives, liaisons, and managers throughout Guangdong. Some of them even resigned to indicate their seriousness. One might ask why. The stated reason was invariably the same that the current crisis and misery had been as a result of Fujitsu mismanagement. And the employees that abased themselves in the public felt responsible for the portion of it. Mismanagement. Wong Hofei, a Fuzhen civil servant in one of the firms where apologies came in hard and fast, muttered, Not as good as saying outright that they screwed up, but it's still a genuine shocker, I won't lie, and I can't shake the feeling that they really mean it. But Japanese people and writers rubbished it. When they heard about the apology taking place, both groups went to the officers to mock the people resigning and apologizing. They deserved it, surely. It was all BS, wasn't it? A lot of face saving lies, wasn't it? Surely, surely. People began to doubt the militancy. Perhaps, perhaps Fujitsu was slightly on the up and up. Could people perhaps take Fujitsu's word for it? Take a lot more than this. My innermost apocalypse. Was it worth it? Time and time again, I ask myself as I shamble along. Oh, losing control. I'll give you this one. Uh, oh, maybe I should. Uh, oh, we'll see. As um, I gave it my all to a dream unfulfilled, only to witness reality crashing down in front of my eyes, it made it my last promise to tread my, tre my own path, to open up my own future, to live out the 50 years God has given me as my own con contested man, only to go back on it with all clenched teeth. Was it worth it? What was it that I could do then, if, nothing, uh, if none of it ever was? The answer remains lost, nonetheless. I've turned my head and taken a step in another direction, where to I do not know the acknowledgement. We decrease five seats. Increase Japanese frustration by 10%. Holy crap. House always wins. Oh. Oh, look at this. Because it's sufficiently weak in the CCL, this man will proceed smoothly. All right, we got him. We actually dismantled them. We didn't even negotiate. The end. The instant we book his bro dogs broke into the shack, Lee Chun's rifle fired away, at least it did for a solid three seconds before the bullet shells jammed. A favorite like he was, he grunted, dashed out from behind the crate, and lunged into the shouts and screams, swords, pistol on the ground to his right. He didn't know the pain of pain uh, shot through his left thigh. The recoil faded from Lam Hao Sun's shoulders. The man crashed into the ground in a pain howl. Mark can find a complete neutralization of CCL leadership. Yet still, Operation 892 had left no time to celebrate. Officer Lam dashed across the wreathing bodies and grabbed the man by the collar, only to find a pair of yellow teeth and sticking into his leather gloves. No one set his brain, then his baton to the man's face. Immense concussions in the bruised eyelids. Chunk could only make out just a bit of his assailant. A man around his age with features that the same of his own. They figured he knew this man, actually. One of the policemen at a rally who years ago he yelled at. And it, same badge number, same MTI, same everything. Thud, thud. The rage had early left Officer Lamb when he finally dropped the blood trench and baton, panting. All he was left to do was to sit at the floor and wait for the black clad man who carried the half conscious body to the van. Arresting place for outlaws. For criminals, for all the scum of the earth, Guangdong had offered before her judgment was to be delivered. 
On second thought, Chun amused as he dizzily watched his own blood trail across the floor. The guy didn't even seem to recognize him at all. Otherwise, the blows would have landed way harder. Maybe this tired boot is just seeing things. He I suppose he needs some rest anyways. Alright. Destruction sensation. Um. Wow. Well, let's see. The t marching of boots. The police boots. The burning of the bridge which cut off any escape route. And the forest around the factory surrounding the sea's factory. Uh, the riders faced off against it with only barricades. Police uh, f forces are waited behind ballistic shields, setting a professional execution of strategy. Time feels frozen between the two sides. Commanding officer, flaunting awards on his uniform, comes forward with a megaphone and begins to speak. Attention all the insurgents within the factory are to be dispersed. Failure to do so can and will be met with force. This is your final warning. A pause from the officer. As he waits for the riders to come out to, or to do anything, there's no response from the riders, so no movement coming out of the building, nor any surrender. CCO would stand firm in his resolve. The commanding officer sighs and issues uses one hand motion to allow the officers to infiltrate. Tear gas begins to fill the air, and the officers quickly destroy the poorly made barricades. Well, the police rush into the factory shortly after. The riders manage to bring weaponry and gas masks. They shot bullets, and although some grace past the officers, one bullet managed to incapacitate one. The officers fired back, but it was clearly sure how many were fell. Blood splatters on the wall with different people. The thick mist of the gas, which the screams of help from the rioters, left an eerie silence, or eerie scene. The shooting continued. For half an hour before the rioters surrendered, 37 dead, 71 wounded, and the rest are imprisoned. Alright. Still not good. Not bad. We still have to play Smokes over ashes. If you close your eyes and listen, sitting in the quiet of the day, it was clear that the riots were up. Guangdong endured many long weeks of blaring police sirens and loud bells, of shouted slogans, and unrestrained anger. They had only recently ended, but now they seemed so distant, so unreachable. When those discordant sounds disappeared, they were replaced by an uncomfortable and unnatural silence. But whether out of a sense of duty or just because it felt like the right thing to do, the rhythms of life eventually returned to fill the void, and soon the silence vanished, replaced with a rather different set of sounds, like all across the three pearls. You could hear the harsh, high scraping of posters being removed. The young man had worked hard, heaving mounds of rubble and ashes to clear the streets. Their beads of sweat fell on places where blood had once shed, and of course, the little clunking of the factories would return a constant metronomic heartbeat that confirmed that Guangdong was indeed alive again. The riots had left many scars across all society, and that wouldn't be easy to repair what could be fixed. He awoke and be still be mended, but slowly, surely, things were settling again. And under the old way, something had changed, and a new normal was beginning to emerge. And so, step by step, step by careful step, Guangdong marches into the future. Throughout all the tumult and chaos of Guangdong riots, Chief Executive Ibuka has finally reestablished control of Guangdong through the skillful handling of the rioters. By reconciling with the assistance of the Silicon Delta, and by reaching out with his old partner, Morito Marita Akeo, Ibuka Masu will unite Guangdong into a new era where it will become a society one can be proud of to call home. Yet the violent dismantlement of the Committee of Chinese Labor has left more to be desired. Beautiful. And reignition. Um. So. Alright. Citizens revigorated. The brightest minds on scale. The government reinforced across land upon our hearts. Across these areas from before. Reignition. At last, it has ended. We made an end of it all. The rest are not fully in the past tense. The IJ have been made to understand that their place once and for all. At last, the harrowing years that the nation and its people once spent lurching from one form of confusion to another are over. At last, the city of Guangdong is truly free to live out the great book of Master vision of transistorized, competitive, uncompromising uncompr future. But first, we must lick our wounds and repair the damage. Let recovery and reconstruction begin, while every cog at the level of society returns to its deserved place. The work will go on, the show shall continue, as it always has been, as it always should be. Those who see ruin rubble in Guangdong forget at, their, forget at their own peril. A fire shines brightest in darkest night. Spring cleaning. Um, this looks like exactly what we read before. Oh, look at this. He's got a different portrait. A fault confessed. What, ha then, has Chief Executive Ibuka Master's vision of Guangdong amounted to the end? What was his last decade? But a chaotic crusade to prove himself infallible, to promulgate him with the same ruthlessness as Inquisition and the Imperial Cult. A dogma that everyone has supposed to fight tooth and nail for excellence, for getting bonds of blood and friendship all in accordance with the diktats charted out on the top floor of Fujitsu. Ibuka knows now, and always has known, in fact, that what he proposed was no truth at all. There exists no such thing as objective truth when it comes to building personal relationships, let alone nation building, the owner reason. Ibuka decided they had to pull such a truth out of his ear, then force it down everyone else's throat so that he, along with all his groundless, senseless, senseless self assurance, could make it true, so that he could delight his conscience and feel better about it. It was all thanks to the providential way in which the oil crisis and the riots played out that Ibuka Masura had snapped out of his decades long trance. The skills are strictly performance, perforce from his eyes, and Ibuka knows now for certain that there is way more. There are more ways in his own to succeed, let alone to function. And when, as heaven is predestined, China returns to her soul and pearls, those days will also bring the final judgment for Ibuka Masaru, whether he deserves to carry on or be stopped forever in his tracks. And the chief executive, weary and contrite, would take all that he could get. So, I think for right now, we're going to save this for the next episode. I think I've read this through all this before, but 
Um, but it might be a little different than what it is because this is the reconciliation path. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow. I'll see you else. It might be different for the last final episode in this Fujitsu campaign for Guandong. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.